Welcome to Picked Voices, the interview series conducted by faculty of the Paris Institute for Critical Thinking with notable members of the broader Pick community. Our goal is to present our community with a variety of voices across the spectrum of the humanities and critical creative thinking. My name is Christophe van Houten, and today we have my good friend and Pick colleague Carlos Valsani with us. Hello, Carlo. Hello, Christophe. Now, most people think that philosophy is some ethereal affair something that has very little, if anything, to do at all with real life. Those of us who do philosophy obviously know this is hardly the case. And today we, will can, we can give a clear example of this. In fact, ever since the spread of the COVID-19 virus, most countries have opted to perform a specific political operation that has been studied by one of today's most provocative European thinkers, the Italian philosopher Giorgio Agamben. The political operation that is at stake is the calling into function of what is called the state of exemption, exception or the state of emergency. And you, Carlo, have studied Agamben profoundly for more than two decades now. So please enlighten us a little bit on this political operation in the context of Agamben's work. Uh, first, a few words about Agamben's project. Uh, f- from the mid-1990s, Agamben embarked on a multi-volume project titled Homo Saka, which in very broad terms investigates the nature of power in the Western political tradition. The project can be said to revolve around precisely the notion of state of of exception, which is for Agamben the main structure of power's functioning and a a volume of the series first published in 2003 is precisely entitled State of Exception. Uh, In a nutshell, The state of exception is a political institution provided for in most present democratic constitutions, which grants the sovereign, be it a democratic government or any other form of sovereignty, the power to suspend the law in exceptional cases, such as the present pandemic, to deal with exceptional circumstances in exceptional ways and with exceptional powers. What Agamben argues is is on the one hand that this very structure is in in reality unveils the true nature of sovereignty or of power, which always tends to accept itself from the constraints of a rule. And on the other hand, and more importantly, that in modernity the exception has become the rule, and thus the state of exception has become, at, at least at a formal level, the true way in which power works. The clearest example Agamben uses in this, in this is, is the institution of the legislative decree, which in theory is a provisional legislative act having temporary force of law, which the government should use precisely only in case of emergency. But that has indeed become the customary way in which most governments act, de facto bypassing the legislative function of parliaments. Now, in this context, what is the impact? Of, of this political institution or this political operation on people's lives, according to Agamben, because this might seem something very appropriate to discuss in our current situation. Well, s- since the emergency or the exception suspends the law, it also suspends all protections and qualifications of life, which is reduced to biological survival, to bare life, as Agamben calls it. Uh, Agamben's very provocative thesis is that when the exception becomes the rule, as it is the case for us today, we are all reduced to bare life, to our biological survival, and the action of power is also reduced to preserve and capture this mere biological survival. Today we are all confined by the order or legislative decree precisely to assure our biological survival. This is what Agamben means by biopolitics a term used first by Michel Foucault in the 1970s, but that Agamben and and other contemporary philosophers, of course, popularized in the 1990s. A politics that cares about and fosters the citizen's life, but in so doing reduces it to mere biological survival. Now, some people are worried, me being one of them, especially considering our current thralls with this virus, that the usage of this political operation is very dangerous. 
when a state can in fact legally reduce one's citizens to mere biological survivor, as you just so interestingly said, well, then that is something that at least I would seriously worry about. So for as much as none of us have a glass ball and can't predict the future, we can, however, discuss the present conditions and argue against or pro in favor of these worries. Well, the, the danger of exceptional situations such as the COVID-19 pandemic is that the exceptional powers uh, governments grant themselves tend to be normalized and persist even after the emergency is over, as happened, for example, with many of the anti-terror measures adopted worldwide after 9-11. The danger is also, of course, that the emergency becomes an excuse to suspend democratic institution to core. In Hungary, Viktor Orban had just the parliament grant him exceptional and unlimited powers for an unlimited time in order precisely to fight the pandemic. Other European politicians have protested because Orban has pushed this constitutional measure too far, beyond the limits of democratic checks and balances. But at a formal level, what happens in the other countries and within the limits of democracy is very similar, and for a gambit amounts to the same. Now, interesting that you mentioned this real diversification in the reaction to the pandemic, Carlo. And exactly in this context, I think the recent controversy, of which I'm sure you are aware that has risen in the philosophical world because of a short text that Agamben has published on the site of one of his main publishers, and, and you can still find it, it's the Italian publisher Quotlibet. And, and I think it is in this context that his uh, words should be interpreted. In, in, namely, in this short text, uh, which he entitled Contagio, Contagion, and which is from only a couple of weeks ago, uh, Kotlibet published it the 11th of March, if I'm not mistaken, he correctly stressed the very real possibility, which has become in fact a fact with Orban, and with the silence of the majority of European countries, which, which makes it even more dangerous. So I do think that his insistence on the actuality of government abusing this measure of the state of exception is pretty much on the dot and required, too, a discussion about this. True, he did downplay Agamben, this pandemic, calling it a so-called or a supposed pandemic, and this obviously infuriated much of his commentators. And considering what the official channels revealed, this is obviously not the case. This is a true pandemic. But, and let me come to my question, because I'm probably saying a little bit too much now. Is it wrong, or better, couldn't there be something in this emphasizing or giving precedence to the perils of this political decision above the peril of this virus? Namely, what I mean is, are these political measures truly justified in these exceptional times? Isn't the insistence on the theoretical peril of this virus to which the attackers of Agambans have shot their darts, not also a means of downplaying the real danger of the political perils? I know this is a, a, a very long and not a single question, and I'm making your life r uh, rather difficult now, but what if both dangers, the vi virological one and the political one, were equally mortal? Well, I, I think I could try to answer your question on two levels. First, it is true that in his brief interventions, uh, he actually published four short pieces between February 26th and March 27th. Agamben downplayed the health situation, which is a very emotional issue, and somewhat misled the reader with his allusive and evocative style. And this very predictably aroused indignant reaction and angry responses. He was accused, as you said, uh, to underestimate the real danger and to mechanically and quite cynically apply his very abstract and theoretical model to a concrete and quite dramatic situation. But on the other hand, he is no physician and his point was not to comment on the medical aspect of the pandemic, but rather on the political response to it. If Agamben quite predictably emphasized the dangers of the state of exceptions which in order to ensure our biological survival isolates people for finally better dominate them and further erode civil liberties, then the reaction of the institution ended up almost comically following piece for piece the pattern Agamben described and criticized for the past 25 years. So if on the one hand 
Agamben showed a lack of practical thinking and a certain short-sightedness with respect to the present concrete health dangers. On the other, he put the finger on a very real and dramatic political danger. Well, I, I guess I'm just confirming the answer implicitly already included in your question. Well, that wasn't the goal, but I'm obviously glad that we have reached some form of, of consensus here. Yeah, uh, if, if I can conclude. Uh, obviously. I would like to conclude by returning to what you say in the beginning, Christoph. Although what Agamben proposes is a rather abstract and theoretical model, which goes way beyond the practical measures we, are, uh, we all have to adopt today in our everyday life, what the present predicament shows more than anything else is that the state of exception has indeed become the rule and that emergency measures have become the customary way in which power works and acts for us today. And even if philosophy obviously has no powers to fight a pandemic or any other emergency, its power is that of questioning and problematizing what appears to be normal, obvious and inevitable, such as the present pandemic and the social and political responses to it. Well, I could not agree more, Carlo, and I thank you for being with us here today and for sharing your knowledge on Agamben and this current rather peculiar political state of exceptions affairs. And considering most of us are all living in quarantine now, or at least something very similar to quarantine or lockdown, it might actually be a good time to pick up one of Agamben's books, uh, maybe at least virtually, and actually read it. We have the time now, time, now, time now. For example, the one that we have been discussing here, the short state of exception. Uh, reading Agamben is indeed a real pleasure, also because, and most people don't know this, most of his books are rather short. They generally don't go beyond the 150 pages. So one might actually finish a book of philosophy in a single day, which is a wonderful thing to do in these uh, difficult times. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us, Carlo. And You're maybe welcome. until Thank you. next time on Picked Voices. Mm -hmm.